Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. If this is your first time watching any of my videos, then hello, my name is Daniela and I am a dermatology resident. This channel is for anyone who is thinking about studying medicine or currently training in medicine. I upload a lot of videos about the journey and give a lot of tips. So if you're interested, please make sure you subscribe to my channel now. So if you're watching this video, it's likely because you are thinking about going to medical school or you've been accepted to medical school or you're currently training in medical school. Either way, congratulations. Let's begin with defining what it means to excel in medical school. It means getting good grades, yes, but it also means developing a diverse CV during your time in medical school so that in conjunction with your good grades that you are ready for the most competitive residency program that you want to go to. It also means that you have met mentors along the way and you have kept healthy and happy. And when I say happy, yes, there are going to be times that you are tired, stressed, overwhelmed, and sometimes thinking, why did I sign up for this? But when you look back at it, that though you really had those were just temporary moments in your most stressful times, and in general, med school was a happy journey. Medical school is always meant to seem so daunting. While challenging, it is not impossible. And medical schools, you really want the best for you. So when I started medical school, I will never forget during my orientation, I was told, look first to the person to the left of you and look to the person to the right of you. I remember hearing that when I was studying in college. And I remember in one of my pre-med classes, they said the same thing, but they said that more than likely, the people next to me would not be here if I was to make it through at the end of the journey. For medical school, this is different. It is more than likely that the person sitting to the left of you and to the right of you will be graduating with you. So what does that mean? That medical school at the end of the day, while challenging, is possible. And these tips today are going to help to make sure that you excel in medical school. A tip I have for you guys is making sure that you are just a nice person. The medical field is small. You don't want to get a bad reputation and just not get along with people and definitely don't want to get on get residents upset or attendings upset. So make sure you're just a nice person, want to get along with everyone as much as you can. Of course, there will be people that you don't really like, but that's okay because there are so many people with so many different personalities. Um, just make sure that you're respectful to everyone and nice to everyone. And this doesn't mean you have to be a social butterfly and all in everyone's face trying to be the friendliest person in the world. But just being a decent human being who's respectful to everyone goes a long way because when you graduate from medical school, your classmates are going to be your colleagues. When you are a third year medical student, being able to have a personality that people can work with will definitely affect your clinical grades because it will be the residents and the attendings who will help to create your grades. And a lot of their decision making will be based on how easy you were to work with, how much you seem interested in learning, and of course, how much clinical knowledge you seem to have. We'll be working with so many people that having a decent personality and being able to work with people of all different backgrounds and personalities will be one of the most important keys to being successful. So I remember going into medical school, I thought that I have to know everything. And the thing is that you have to study. You will study a lot. You will be studying throughout the day, throughout the night, depending on your study habits. However, this is what you came here to do. You came to learn medicine, so you will. The most challenging part is getting your groove, figuring out what are the best study mechanisms for you. Everyone is completely different, so don't compare yourself to other people. When it comes to study resources, at this point, there are like an overwhelming amount of resources that you can find as a medical student. 
it is you can study from a hundred different books but still get the same knowledge so what i will say is just determine a few resources that work for you i like to switch it all up i listen to the lecture from my class and then I'll read from one of my favorite textbooks and then I would also listen to videos. When it came to test days, I'd also use something such as um, flashcards. I used Anki um, because I thought that me writing out um, questions and then reading it back to myself when I'm using it as a flashcard was a great way for me to study. That doesn't work with everyone. So once again, figure out your groove. I think that everyone needs to figure out how to study on their own because you won't be able to define your studying based on someone else. But a study buddy is a great addition to changing it up when you don't feel like studying alone. Determine if you like study groups. I love study groups, but closer to an exam date. If I had an exam, I would love to do a study group probably like a day or two before the test because a study group allows for a bigger group of people to throw ideas together. Sometimes you could be like, oh my God, I didn't even know that. Or, oh, I didn't understand this, but you explained it to me so much better. You have a whole bunch of different minds studying on a topic together. So I think study groups are great, but it's not for everyone. Once again, figure out what works best for you. Make sure that you're prioritizing your studying. You can get lost in medical school when it comes to socializing, networking, shadowing, doing research, community service, volunteering, all the things that come with med school. However, make sure that studying comes number one because that is really the foundation of you becoming a great physician. My next suggestion is making sure that you get mentors. I think getting mentors is probably one of the most important things you can do for yourself in medical school. The reason I say that is because mentors help to expand your understanding of the world of medicine, especially when you make sure that you get multiple mentors. Your multiple mentors will help mold you. They also will all have different opinions and will allow you to decide what works best for you and who you want to be as a physician. When you are applying to residency, your mentor just might be the person who writes a recommendation letter for you. Your mentor might also be the person who was a resident or a faculty member at a program you really want to go to and might put in a word for you because they know you and formed a relationship. Mentors open up so many doors for students that really it's endless. Like I can't even explain to you the importance of it. You can also get mentors through networking. You network when you go to conferences, when you do extracurricular activities, volunteering in the community, when you do research, and then you form a connection by making sure you get the person's email address and you follow up with them through that email and just let them know a little bit about you and maintaining that relationship so that anytime throughout your medical school career or even after, you can always feel comfortable with reaching out to them. I also suggest networking with upper years. The upper years in your medical school would be one of the best resources because they actually know how your medical school works. So for example, they will be able to give you the resources that work best with the test because some tests will more than likely reflect what was taught in the lectures and usually lectures are taught over the many years. So a lot of students would know what are the best resources to address the specific test that you'll be seeing in your medical school in your first and second years. The upper years will also be great to let you know um, great organizations to join. They will also know great mentors. That they, especially if they have a mentor that they think was is fabulous, they will definitely rec they can recommend that mentor to you. And then, especially when it comes to applying to residencies, when you determine what field you want to go to, if you have spoken to an upper year, eventually went off into the fields that you're interested in, you can always reach out to them because they can also be a great help in helping you figure out what programs to apply to. Um, helping you with your personal statement. This also goes for residents when you reach to the, your third year. Network with resident physicians because they can give you research projects, give you tips um, on the specific field that you're interested in. Everyone is a great resource. Shadowing is definitely very important. 
I even had a mentor who told me that shadowing wasn't that important because you'll get that experience in your, in your clinical years. I realized afterwards that that is not true. There are some fields that you just aren't exposed to in medical school. They're not considered part of your core rotations. And you may be able to apply for certain rotations that are considered electives, which are voluntary rotations that you take upon yourself. However, there are fields that I didn't even experience in medical school, such as ophthalmology, radiology, shadow in your first and second years before you're mandated to start doing clinical rotations. During your first and second year, just choose any rotation that you feel like um, that you think you might be interested in or even a field that you don't know anything about. That just might become the field for you. You never know. It helps you realize what you might want to do later on or what you might not want to do later on. And that's okay. But by the time you reach your third year, you at least have some understanding of what you're looking for as a career. Okay. When it comes to research, research is another way, like I said, to get a mentor, but also research is a good way to make your residency application look a little bit better, even if you don't like research. And this is coming from someone who hated research in undergrad. And I ended up doing a lot of research, mainly because I was going into dermatology and it was a field that likes research, but when I started doing research in the field that I loved, I also started enjoying the research projects I was doing. My medical school actually mandates we do a research project. And I remember when I started medical school, I was really annoyed by that role, but I was really grateful at the end of it when I actually had a project under my belt because it added to my CV. And then it wasn't until 30, I decided I wanted to do dermatology and I had to rush into a whole bunch of projects, but I it made me feel a little bit better that at least I had something that I had already worked on. And of course, for my residency interviews, they asked me about that specific project. And that project was never even published in any journal, but it still meant something to the programs. So just do a research project. Um, it doesn't have to be long. It doesn't have to take many years like some of them do. Some can be really short, probably take like a month or two to write up, especially if you do like a case report and you're helping um, a resident with a case report or an attending with a case report. However, some projects do take long. And because of that, that's probably why you should give yourself time starting early in your first or second year. Additionally, there are so many things that research can do for you. Research can help introduce you to a new mentor. Research can help introduce you to a field that you weren't even thinking about and now you're thinking that maybe you might want to pursue it as a career. Research might even make you think that you want to include research in your future career. And if you just do one project and realize you hate it and then you realize you're doing, you're going to join a field where you don't even need a project, then that's fine. But like I said, I'm just setting you up for the ultimate forms of success and I do think that research is one of them especially because for competitive programs, most of them want to see that you did research. My next tip is ensuring that you are getting involved in the things that make you happy, meaning your hobbies. Whatever hobby you had before medical school, while you may not be able to keep all, at least try to keep some of them, if not all. It helps to make you sane throughout a challenging four years. It helps to make you keep being you. And then once again, it also helps on those residency applications when they ask you what you do in your free time. You should be partaking in extracurricular activities. I say that because once again, it's a great way to get mentors. Secondly, it's a great way to just be social getting involved possibly in the community. And additionally, when you apply for residency applications, the, the residency programs want to see that you were doing things that make you a complex, interesting human being that not only wants to help patients, but wants to help other aspects of the world.
To succeed in medical school, you have to be paying attention to your health. Med school is very stressful, especially when the big exams are arriving. And it's also very stressful when you're thinking about residency and applying to residency. So because of that, your mental health can be greatly affected. So uh, if you've already had any kind of mental health conditions prior to medical school, this is definitely the time that it will worsen if you're not taking care of it. So make sure that you learn healthy habits before even before becoming a doctor. You want to bring the best version of yourself to school because it helps make you learn better, take tests better, and ultimately become the best physician that you can possibly be. Do not be ashamed by any chronic condition that you have, including your mental health. Those are all of my tips for medical school. If you have any questions or you want me to tell you more about a specific topic, leave it in the comment section. If you want to get to know me a little bit better, follow me on my Instagram at the real skin I'm in. And make sure you press that subscribe button to ensure that you're keeping up with all of my latest videos. Bye.